So this stuff here is malted barley. Start the brewing process by soaking uh, malted barley in hot water. And we soak that in the mash tun, that's what that's called. It's designed to hold heat in so we can keep the temperature of the mash bed steady. This is what we make beer out of. This is where we get the sugar that the yeast eats to make the alcohol. You get a bunch of other stuff, the flavors and aromas. It doesn't matter whether you're making a pale ale or a stout. Uh, it's mostly this pale stuff on the bottom. It only takes a little of this dark stuff to really change it a lot. Uh, we got some wheat in there too because we put some wheat in pretty much all of our beer. In the morning, this metal's all cold, so we'll heat this cold metal up with about 10 gallons. It goes down the drain. We'll put 15 gallons in the bottom, and then we'll start running our grain through the mill there. It gets cracked open just a little bit, travels up this auger, falls down through that arm back there, and uh, it falls through this copper square, which sprays it with water as it's falling, so you don't want any air pockets in there. So once we get all our grain in there, it's a little over 100 gallons of water that ends up in there with it. And uh, we cover it up and it sits in here for an hour and a half. And what we're trying to do is soak it at 150 degrees roughly for an hour, at least an hour. We do an hour and a half. Um, and that temperature, 150, is right in the middle of this roughly 15 degree range where these enzymes in the malted barley are active and they break the starches down into sugars for us. That's how we get sugar out of the grain. So after an hour and a half, there's a bunch of sugar in here. And we've got a false bottom under this grain so we can drain that liquid away, leave the grain behind. Uh, that sugar water is called wort and brewing. Um, so that drains to a pump back there. And we pump it up this pipe into our boiling kettle, our copper. And at the same time, we start to rinse it. This thing is called a sparge arm. It's called sparging when you rinse it. So we'll pump the rest of our hot water down through the sparge arm, down through the grain bed and into our copper. That's called the copper. Um, I usually call it the boiling kettle. It's uh, just a kettle for boiling our, our wort in. Wort is the name of that sugar water we make. Uh, as soon as it starts to boil, we'll throw some hops in there. Boils for an hour. Most of our beers um, have uh, at least two hop additions in the boil. We get a bunch of bitter compounds out of the hops, and that balances out the sweetness of the sugar. We also get some flavors and aromas, and they act as a preservative as well. And depending on how long you boil the hops for, you'll get different things out of them. Um, the bitter stuff, it doesn't get destroyed at all, and you just slowly keep getting more and more the longer you boil the hops. The flavor stuff it takes about 20 minutes to get into the wort, and then after about 40 minutes it gets destroyed. And then the aromatic stuff, uh, that gets boiled off into the air pretty fast. So depending on what you want to get out of the hops, you add it at different times. There's lots of different hops, different flavors and aromas, at different levels of bitterness. Um, and then these things here, uh, these are both hops, but these are the whole flowers, and these are flowers compressed into pellets, just to save them space. So uh, for most of our beers here, we boil some hops for an hour. Those are our bittering hops. Some for half an hour, those are our flavoring hops. And then our aroma hops, uh, we make a hop tea here. On the other side of our boiling kettle, we have a hop percolator, this steel cylinder. We just soak our aroma hops for several hours in hot water. Uh, so once the boil is over, it sits in here for another hour. Those hops, a bunch of other stuff, settles to the bottom. Uh, and then we'll start pumping it into one of our fermenters. And on the way, we'll pump it through those aroma hops. It passes through the wall there, goes through a heat exchanger and it cools down to 65, 70 degrees, and it ends up in one of our fermenters. We use open fermenters, they're traditional, open to the air. It's where the yeast eats the, uh, the sugar to make the alcohol. Um, fermentation takes about three or four days, and we'll stop the fermentation, and we'll sit there for a few more days. So we'll, we'll add the yeast to that hoppy wort as we fill these tanks up, um, and then you can officially call it beer if you want to. So once the fermentation gets going, it foams up a lot. As you can see, uh, that foam is yeast, so we'll scoop that off the top, make more beer with it later on. Uh, the fermentation takes about three or four days and we'll shut it down where we want it to stop. Uh, the pink stuff in these hoses is coolant. So if these get too cold, they go dormant. So we'll put them to sleep. It'll stay in these tanks for a few more days. Uh, they sink to the bottom for the most part when they go dormant. And uh, then right below this room, we have a refrigerated room. We've got seven serving tanks down there. We've got a hole in the floor over there somewhere. So when we're ready, we'll hook a hose up between the tanks, let the beer flow. We'll add some stuff to clear it up. It sits in that tank for a day or so. Some more stuff settles out. Uh, and then it's ready to filter and carbonate. It only takes uh, a few hours. So it's about 10 days grain to tap. The grain, our spent grain, uh, after we're done rinsing the sugars from it, uh, most of that goes off to a local farm. 
and they feed it to their animals. And then we use some of it in our bakery here downstairs. We have a maple porter. That's our seasonal. How do you inject the maple into the, into the actual batch? Uh, we add maple syrup, uh, which is from Fadden Sugar House, right there, uh, into our boiling kettle. Oh. About halfway, while we're filling it up, we add that. Yeah. 